This is Tim Johnson nearly a year after Tropical Storm Irene left where we are right now, the Preston parking lot in Brattleboro on Flat Street, underwater. And I'm pleased to have one of the people responsible for helping us heal, helping us get right again. Sandy Daly is the chair of the Wyndham County Long-Term Recovery Committee. You and I have spoken a couple of times, and really what people forget is this is not a quick process to bring ourselves around from really a seminal event, something that has uh, been a once-in-a-century storm. Uh, the recovery is still going on a year later. Yes, it is. The, the first couple of months are, are mostly response. It's making sure that people have a roof over their heads, clothing on their backs, enough food, medications, and so on. And then the dust settles a bit, if you will. Um, but there are still many, many people who um, have uh, no, perhaps more complex uh, situations to work with. And uh, so trying to find um, the various resources to help them get back into a safe, uh, sanitary um, living situation has um, sometimes involved seeking funding from a number of different places, uh, having a variety of different um, people with expertise to go to their site. Uh, sometimes it's waiting for um, knowledge whether a mobile home can be replaced or needs to be repaired or whether um, a home that was uh, pretty much completely destroyed is going to receive buyout and then the people can rebuild in a safer situation. So there are a lot of, uh, a lot of situations that are enduring. Uh, and we're told from other places that maybe experience disasters more often than we do here in Vermont that uh, recovery for many uh, can be two, five years, sometimes even longer. And even then, it's not necessarily a return to pre-Irene conditions. So one of the things that really we're waiting on here in Wyndham County and all throughout Vermont is the fact that FEMA has not yet made its decisions on which properties will be bought out. Well, it's not just FEMA. Um, there's, you know, like, like anything that has to go through um, sort of the sifting process of governments and procedures and so on, um, there are a combination of what a town is willing or able to do, what an individual is willing and able to do, what the state is willing and able to do, and, and what uh, FEMA is. So putting those pieces together, sometimes um, having all of the partners, if you will, in that process of recovery um, can sometimes be more complicated than it might look on paper. So really at this point, the needs are still human power, and funding at the local level? They really are. Um, you know, we've, uh, through the Southeastern Vermont Long-Term Recovery Committee and generous donations from uh, local folks and businesses, we have head funds that we were able to um, uh, listen to the case workers, uh, present to us, and ad administer what we have. But it really feels like a drop in the bucket. Uh, and so we really have to add to that human resources, volunteers, uh, in-kind donations. And then um, there have been some pretty generous funds set up uh, through the state, too. As a matter of fact, um, there have been others who've come in from other states, and FEMA came in to say that Vermont really has done a terrific job. and. Um, they're looking to learn from how we've handled things here. Uh, so it's been fairly streamlined, even though it feels like forever for some folks. The other part of the recovery that I don't think people focus on enough is the whole healing part of it from the individual and group standpoint. There's been an organization called Starting Over Strong Vermont, made from mental health professionals that really has helped a great deal. But in talking with people in recent weeks, I've, I've run into something that I didn't realize existed. Maybe I should have, but I didn't. Something called Irene fatigue. What is that? Well, I, I suppose it's different for different people, but there are those who were not directly affected, 
and for whom the storm really is history. Uh, and, um, and then there are others for whom <laughs> they were very much affected and uh, feel like they're just ready to move on. Either their uh, situation has been resolved well enough and they're tired of talking about it. Um, and then there's those who have been somehow involved in helping and they're fatigued simply by continuing with work that's, that sometimes feels endless. So given all of that, what are we doing to help all of those different constituency groups? I realize clergy, and I, I will say that you are a member of the clergy as well as being chair of this community. What's going on to help? Well, one of the things that uh, Starting Over Strong and local faith communities have been able to come together, as well as some other community organizations, is to hold times when people can tell their stories. Uh, because there's great healing in being able to talk about what you've experienced and hear that you're not the only one that has experienced it. So there's a sharing in that sense. Um, and, it, and out of that sometimes comes the recognition of uh, some resource that we weren't thinking of before that might help. Um, there's just g gatherings like potluck suppers and that sort of thing. Of course, individuals who are connected with a faith community um, Hopefully their, uh, their faith leader has an eye out for those who may be uh, exhibiting some post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms of uh, depression or unable to sort of get on with life, um, uh, chemical use, that sort of thing. Um, it's, there's all kinds of ways that we deal with loss and unfortunately many of them are unhealthy. And this really is to many people a loss. Um, looking at something that we can see right in front of us, the Whetstone Brook. The Whetstone is different from what it was. Uh, many uh, brooks and rivers and streams are different than what they were. Many buildings are different than what they were. Yes, you can patch up stuff, but it's not what you remember. That's right, yep. And, you know, I think one of the things that is significant about recognizing the anniversary and the various different ways that places around the, the state and around our county are um, are recognizing that and celebrating what has been able to be done for recovery and the way neighbors have reached out to neighbors and so on and really recognizing um, that there is a loss and you know to pause and remember that lives were lost uh, a way of life was lost for many people uh, and to stand together in that. And I know that uh, there are, there are um, you know, there's a, a parade going out in uh, Williamsville uh, to raise funds for the de fire department out there because they were so instrumental in uh, saving folks' lives. Uh, there's, um, we're gonna be having a, a candlelight vigil up on the green on the 28th uh, around 6.30, just to remember uh, and then on sort of a lighter side because, you know, one of the things that we need in order to cope with life is the ability to sort of laugh, too. Uh, the, um, the theater, the Latches Theater, is going to be showing uh, uh, Singing in the Rain. And uh, so it's an opportunity to get together and, and just, you know, I think just being together has a tremendous amount of, of healing, just coming together and sharing our experiences. So at this point, what can our friends, our neighbors do to play a role in helping people who are still in need? Well, you know, one of the things, we're, we are, believe it or not, still having people uh, approach us who had not realized that they had a problem or had not realized that there was help out there. So one thing that we can all do is look out for our neighbors. If we think that they might, uh, you know, benefit from having somebody help them with debris that just doesn't look like it's moving from their lawn or, uh, you know, just there's that concrete type of help. Um, we're still administering funds to help people with things that are more costly, whether it's rebuilding, uh, repairing grounds, uh, b rebuilding a driveway, that sort of thing. That all costs money. So donations can still be made to United Way, and uh, those are 100% administered to individuals' problems. Um, we always use volunteers. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a great asset. 
and uh, there continue to be opportunities to um, kind of roll up your sleeves and getting in touch with the United Way. They, are, they keep kind of a database of people who have the need of volunteers and people who are able to volunteer their time. Uh, so there's, there are all kinds of ways. Um, most, most recently we were donated a tool trailer that can be taken out to different job sites. Um, we need tools. So, um, you know, going to the, uh, to the website, to United Way's website or to WyndhamStatus.org will point you in different directions as an individual that you can help. You know, Sandy, one of the more heartening things that we've seen is new growth and renewal in the midst of everything. Uh, and I guess there's no better example than the one we're looking at across the brook. The uh, Brattleboro Food Co-op new building is up. They're tearing down the old building for additional parking. Yeah. You know, it's, it is in some ways, I mean, we never want a tragedy or a disaster to come our way. But one of the wonderful things, we're not only strengthened as a community as we reach out to each other, but it's an opportunity. Um, it's an opportunity to evaluate what resources we have to improve, not only to um, improve how things are set so that should we, heaven forbid, have another flood, we're better positioned as individuals and as a community, but also it's, it's just an opportunity to improve people's lives. Sandy Daly, thank you so much. And again, how can people get in touch with the Wyndham County Long-Term Recovery Committee? Uh, we have a website, which is WyndhamStatus.org. And then if you're interested in finding out from United Way how you might uh, help out, it's info at UnitedWayWyndham.org. Thank you again. Okay. You're very welcome. Thank you. You're welcome.